In 2011, NRCS in California developed the Migratory Bird Habitat Initiative, a pilot program to enhance habitat in Calusa and Glen counties in the Northern Central Valley. The program proved to be popular with farmers and conservationists. This led to an expansion of the effort to Butte, Sutter, Yolo, and Yuba counties in 2012 under a new name, the Waterbird Habitat Enhancement Program. The Migratory Bird Habitat Initiative started about a little over a year ago after the um, Gulf oil spill. The agency decided to get involved with trying to help migratory birds in the Mississippi Flyway by providing supplemental habitat on flooded crop ground. This year, we had an opportunity to expand that idea out into the Sacramento Valley of California, working with rice farmers to provide habitat that isn't usually available for migratory shorebirds. It's a very popular program with the farmers. They're uh, interested not only in changing the, some of their cultural practices, but also seeing the different shorebirds out on their properties. Normally during the late summer and late winter seasons, rice fields are dry. The farmers are, have them either dried or they have their crops growing in them. So there's a limited amount of habitat for those shorebird species. Hi, I'm Rob Valach. I'm the district conservationist for the Glen County Field Office. Today we're out at a rice farm that's participating in our migratory bird initiative. In the wintertime when the shorebirds migrate through northern California, typically these rice flats will be dry after harvest. And what the incentive payment does is it encourages those growers to apply water to those fields to provide mudflat habitat for the shorebirds to forage on. We're providing an incentive payment to apply water post-harvest and then winter flood the, the rice paddies, which would benefit the, the rice producer because it helps him with his rice decomp and it also provides um, critical foraging habitat for the migrant shorebirds when they come into the Central Valley. Some of the other practices are modifying the internal levees. By widening uh, the levees, you're providing additional nesting habitat uh, for shorebirds and waterfowl. We're also providing um, nest boxes for owls and also um, bat boxes. Morning. Hi Rob, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Well, the rice sure looks nice. It's coming along. It's <laughs> been good spring so far. My name's Curtis Amaro. I'm a Glen County rice farmer. We're in uh, just east of Willows. I'm a third generation uh, rice farmer and been farming on this property most of my life. Behind us are is a warming pond and some loafing islands and we put those in to help warm the water in the rice field and the loafing islands will be used by uh, shorebirds and waterfowl to uh, rest and possibly nest on. We installed some owl boxes this spring and we also have uh, in this area we have many wood duck boxes Wood duck box has been here for a long time, probably for the last 15 years. Hi, my name is Candy Manhart, and I'm the executive officer for the Glen County Resource Conservation District. We've partnered recently with the Willows High School Woodshop Class and FFA group to build these owl boxes. In fall of 2011, we saw an opportunity to have create a partnership with the local school district and the NRCS offices in helping meet a demand. The NRCS created the Migratory Bird Initiative in which we saw that landowners and land managers would need to install these nesting habitats to complete their conservation efforts. This partnership has been going for about nine months now and we've seen it grow from a small pilot program uh, where we've estimated 20, 25 boxes being sold to selling over 50 or so. We're seeing the, the real benefits of being able to partner with a local educational venue to start a business and the kids get to make money. So we hope to continue working with the high school in doing that.
The major context that we want to provide, not only to the NRCS people who are out delivering the program, but more importantly to the landowners who are spending their money, their time, their energy, their labor to put these practices on the ground and manage them, is that these birds are hemispheric. They go from the northern hemisphere, many of them down to the southern hemisphere. These birds are long distance migrants, many of them, and they need uh, a lot of nutrition and a lot of energy to be able to live out that part of their life history. NRCS often has the funding through the Farm Bill to plan and implement programs, but often they don't have the money to monitor to see just how successful have we been at applying these programs and in buying conservation. So I think that's a benefit. You know, we started some of the monitoring this last winter, but we expect to be monitoring for the next three to five years to uh, give us some baseline information and some uh, information about increases that we would expect to see as a consequence of the placement of these projects. I think that this program is a really great way to set precedence of how we can get conservation on the ground in a current agricultural practice. So something that's already in motion, you know, rice farmers already have these various practices and we just enhance them by doing these small techniques that really provided a huge amount of habitat. And that in itself, providing that increase of habitat, is it going to increase nest success, it's going to increase migratory bird success, and just providing that alone is going to help those populations out immensely. So I think for the Sacramento region, it's going to definitely help with the populations. And then I think looking at it from an NRCS point of view, it's a great way to say, look at the great amount of conservation we put on the ground and the success of the conservation program being the number of birds and the diversity of birds and our native birds are coming back and that's a great thing to see. So people will want to, I, I hope, be interested in being involved in seeing those same results on their land, their private property. For more information about NRCS conservation programs, contact your local NRCS office or visit our website.